So, you want to understand how I achieved the detailed grunge textures which I created for the likes of my House Moving Castle project, as well as pretty much all of the models which I've showcased in recent videos. Well, I've got this question a few times before, so let's break that down today. Now, a blend file with the PPR textures packed into it is going to be available for your guys' use on my Ko-Fi Free For All members, so definitely check that out if that sounds interesting to you. So first, we have to decide what our material is going to be and what the nature of it is. You can approach this from both a narrative and a technical perspective. What, what am I trying to achieve here? What am I trying to get to? Now, this castle is made out of rusted metal, and this will have wear and tear on it, as well as moss growing, discoloration, and we can also note our color palette from it. The coloring is browns, reds, greens, and grays mostly throughout the castle. Now that we've looked at the kind of technical bit, let's think of the narrative and atmosphere. Now for Howl's Moving Castle, it's sort of imperfect and cozy. Yes, it just looks sporadic, and like we're painting a painting, like I talked about in my previous video. Giving yourself lots of freedom is important in achieving that Ghibli style. You don't want to constrain yourself too much. Be experimental, and don't stress. Don't stress about it. It's the epitome of Studio Ghibli. This is what our colour palette and textures are looking like right now. These aren't done yet, you can see what we're set out to achieve. The distinction between the metals and the sort of concretes, and the distinction between that and the bricks, and the more kind of like machinery sort of metal that I've used here, the copper, and the little subtle variations as well. Now for this robot project, which some of you guys asked me about, we can't expect him to be all clean and untouched right, and so he's got to look like he's seen some combat, and like some stuff's kind of like messed him up a little bit. So there's got to be some grit and surface and perfection. What I've done here is quite basic. I'll explain it. All right. You might also be able to tell zoomed in up close. This is kind of weird because these are actually fingerprints and you just can't really tell that much at a distance. It all just looks like nice grunge. That's my rule of thumb. Something you can take away from this video. Every map can be a grunge map. Or just go through the node setup real quick. So after some cleanup, we can really separate it into this, which is being used for our metallic. And that makes it look like stuff's kind of like sheared off paint in like places or like kind of like impacted, you know? And then this which is being used to kind of like mix in our normal map and also a roughness map. And then we can just change our base color separately. But yeah, that's how I got this look with very few nodes to be honest. Just one image texture basically, feeding the whole thing. You can see stuff gets a little bit more complicated with this but we've just got, you know, three layered PBR textures basically, which are feeding together. So like one of our PBR textures looks like that, one of them looks like that and one of them looks like that and then we're using mix shader nodes to mix all of that principal bsdfs together and what we're doing is we are using more of these surface imperfection maps to feed the factor and what that's doing in simple terms is just like choosing when to show each of the maps you know the locations where each of these maps will display you can see if i inverted it, it shows like that several lots of mixing happening all of these layers and the more layers you mix the more kind of like intricate and realistic it's going to look you can see we can also simply use procedural textures to get quite a long way with just very few nodes. You can use some uh, procedural stuff inside of Blender and you can make it look really really good, but it's quite difficult to do that and you'll probably just save yourself time if you use some image textures and you just don't want stuff to start looking samey because the human eye is pretty good at recognizing patterns and the uh, noise patterns and stuff that Blender uses for procedurals do get somewhat repetitive if you just keep using them in all of your different materials. The next point is to be experimental with it. Use what's available to you or just what is working for you. Don't really worry about like, oh this is a roughness map, I gotta use this for roughness, oh this is a normal map, I gotta use this for normal. Like you can use a color ramp, convert anything to black and white and just use it for metallic roughness. So just don't be afraid to try stuff. Obviously don't settle for less just because it's easy, don't get like you know kind of complacent with just like reusing the same stuff over and over again and kind of getting back to that and how this relates i really love the concrete look that i created for my suzume render and i knew that that kind of style was what i really wanted for the house moving castle render and now you might say that's concrete what we've got here is metal you know we got to start again we got to make a new texture but really i can just take that and apply it here and despite it not being metal and being the wrong colors I can rope in some different nodes, change the colors on the color ramps, up the metallic values, change around some stuff, remove some stuff, and in like 10 minutes or so, we've got something brand new, complex, and fit for purpose with a lot less effort needed than if I'd started from scratch and tried to make this all. You know, if you tweak something which you're proud of, which you made before, which worked existing, you know, even if it seems quite different, you can pull some of the good aspects out of it, you know. In this case, the good aspects were just the layering, and I was happy with the surface imperfections used, like, now, my final point for this video is actually a game term, like for video games and stuff, because I'm somewhat of a gamer. Um, min-max your textures, 
I mean this on several levels. Extensively use color ramps on PBR and image textures to not only change colors but also intensity. Frequently roughness maps are very low in contrast and subtle, which can be fine but often it is really cool to bring out that glisten. I'll show you what I mean here, alright. Now a lot of maps are going to look something like this. This is feeding into a normal map, basically, and it is very low in contrast. And it gets the job done, you know, like, but it's just quite monotonous and it's very lack of variation. And so if we were to do something extreme, you know, crank this all the way to black, start moving it, you can see we can start to break up the monotony in the shapes. And you know, we don't want to actually do something this extreme, we'll want to be using greys and dark greys and stuff. But you know, if we can do stuff like this and look how much more interesting that looks, you know, just with some minor tweaks basically using this color ramp. The color ramp is one of the most important nodes in the shade editor and make sure that you use it a lot, you know? Definitely get all of your surface imperfection maps gathered into a photo folder so that in the future you can iterate even faster. In terms of getting your hands on some, you can use texture websites for free as well as AI. Ambient CG, Polyhaven, all of those guys. You know, you can download any PBR texture and grab the maps from that and just use them. Roughness maps especially work quite well for a lot of different grunge material purposes. Uh, also, make duplicates of the same texture, tweak color values and other sliders, maybe swap out an image or unplug or plug in something new, but essentially create variants with very little work to add some sparkle to your model. You can see I've done this here in several places. We've got Plaster Wall 2, which is by the way incorrectly named, and Plaster Wall 1. And all that these are is just color differences, basically, and then some slight metallic differences and all of that. And it just adds some slight interest and textual variation. You can see that here. These are basically the same texture, but one of them's tweaked slightly in the hue, the saturation, and like all of that kind of stuff. And you might say, oh, but we've already got all this layering, you know, surely you don't need to go too far. Well, this project is inherently sort of messy, and, you know, I want it to be sort of like very um, cluttered. You know, this builds contrast by having all of these different variations of very similar ideas like this is again all of these are just basically built off of the same texture but like one of them is quite greenish one of them is like copper color and one of them is like a dark red rusted color and just randomly applying it to different plates for the legs and yeah we get this pretty cool look it looks nice and varied and it didn't take much work it's really just changing colors and color ramps and changing some sliders and like you're good to go I've got one, two, three, four, five materials for this one mesh, basically. I mean, uh, well, technically it's a lot of meshes to just kind of like put together into one object, but like, you know, some people might only use like a couple. That's fine, you know, if you're UV unwrapping like a big atlas texture or something, you can just use a couple, but just make sure that you've got enough variation, you know? Make sure that you're telling a story through your textures. You know, pretty much all parts of the 3D render pipeline have a narrative aspect to them, and just make sure that you're kind of getting that across, you know? Like, are you communicating the shape? of your object well, you know, are you communicating the purpose of it well? Are you communicating whether it's kind of something which is synthesized and very artificial or whether it's something that's kind of cobbled together like this, you know? Again, model and texture like you're painting a picture, as I said in the last video. Anyways guys, I really hope this helps. If you want to see more interesting material works, check out my Painterly Textures video and some other ones. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to my new Ko-Fi supporter, Joe Smith, and my loyal recurring subscriber, Mr. Holmes really appreciate that. More stuff on the way. Ciao. A ton, mate. Oh, next. Look at the landing. He's good. Wait. He's an idiot.